So yeah, I'm gonna start the show and then show. <laughs> it's not quite a show. I, I think it's it's Facebook. I'm trying to be okay, hip and young. Okay, ten seconds from now. Too old, too middle-aged, white bearded men. I'm here. That's what I'm here to do. Keep it up. Hello and welcome to the United Nations in New York. We're back as we have been much of this week at this time of the day on Facebook Live with Al Jazeera, trying to give you a bit of a behind the scenes look at what's going on here at the UN General Assembly, the high level week, leaders of the world here, an important day today, an important guest with us today, because you keep bugging me with lots of detailed questions about the UN and the problems with the UN, and I keep trying to answer them, but I'm not a spokesman for the United Nations. The spokesman, the spokesman for Ban Ki-moon will be joining us in just a moment. So please get your questions ready uh, for what you think of the United Nations, what you think the United Nations should be doing, what the problems are with the United Nations. Uh, talk about the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, he's only got a few more months in his job. Uh, this is the spokesman for Ban Ki-moon joining us uh, in just a few moments. First though, let's have a quick look at what to expect uh, in the coming hours here at the UN. Whitney Hurst is with me again. Morning, Whitney. Good morning. Uh, yeah, we're going to hear from F Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. He's going to be giving a speech in the General Assembly. We're going to hear from the North Korean Foreign Minister, um, and Sergei Lavrov's also going to be giving a press conference later today. And we think that uh, Lavrov and John Kerry will probably be holding some meetings uh, today on that Syrian diplomacy that failed yesterday. Very important after the ISSG meeting, the meeting of the International Syria Support Group, which all of the key players came to that meeting in New York hoping to push things forward, and it was a disappointing meeting, no one hiding their disappointment, including the UN Special Envoy Stefan Di Mastura and John Kerry. Very limited comments from Sergei Lavrov at the mini end of that meeting simply said to me nothing happened consultations continue he'll have to say a bit more today when he gives that long speech representing Russia no Vladimir Putin here this this year when he gives that long speech in the General Assembly and when he answers questions uh, at a news conference and another news conference we know about the French Foreign Minister also I suspect questions on Syria that'll be the focus probably of that news conference so we don't have any questions yet but I think we should bring in our guests to get people warmed up um, and our guest is a UN veteran, Stefan Dujaric, who is the spokesman for the Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. Don't take my coffee. Good morning, James. How are you? You're allowed yes, exactly. Coffee. You could do a lot of things, but you can't take my coffee. Not at this time yeah, in the yeah. morning. And I know the spokesman for the Secretary General, this isn't the start of the day, is it? You've been up for hours. We've been up for, for quite some time. It's not my first cup of coffee. So you'll take questions from people sure, today, happy. and he won't necessarily answer them, I can right. tell you, because I ask him questions very regularly, but he'll do his best to answer In, them indeed, if he I'm, can, and yeah. if they're within your remit and whatever. Um, tell us a little bit about the atmosphere at the UN General Assembly. I don't know how many of these you've been to now. It's my 16th, and I have to tell you, every one of them is special, because especially on that first day when just about every world leader is in one room, you can't help but feel there's something special in the halls of the UN. It's really the UN as the convener uh, at a place where they all come. They may disagree on a lot of things, but they're all engaged. Uh, they're all trying to push the issues forward, trying to solve some problems. Um, and it's, it's a very unique and special atmosphere. I mean, you know, we joke that it's sort of the... The, the World Cup of Diplomacy, the Oscars of Diplomacy, and it's true, you walk the halls, it's like, oh, you know, there's the President of the United States, there's the Prime Minister of Russia, and, and then you look around like, I know that guy, oh yes, he's the Prime Minister of, yes, that, that country, you know, it's a, you, it's, it's, it's a very special and fun atmosphere. And real substance talks about here, but at the same time, I'm assuming behind the scenes, this is a bit of a logistic nightmare, putting this together. Well, I think my, my <laughs> colleagues who, who set up the meetings are just tremendous because they, you know, there are more than a thousand bilateral meetings between different uh, delegations. And I think it's the key, one of the keys of what happens here at the UN. It gives world leaders a chance to meet one-on-one -on -one away from the glare of the media and away in a sense from from the pressure they don't have to do a, a, an official trip to a country or to another they can have discrete discussions that can often be the start of something very positive 
Whitney, we have some questions coming in now from our audience on Facebook. And if you want to speak to Ban Ki Moon's spokesman, please put your questions in now. It's the chance now, and it won't be here for long. Go ahead, Whitney. All right, we have a few <laughs> questions and comments. Um, we get lots of comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Steph's used to those. Okay, uh, Sania Shahazad says, what meaningful steps have been taken to end the war in Syria? Um, we're also getting a lot of people asking about Kashmir, which they're saying they don't hear um, much about it from the UN. Is it a priority? And Maima Saw it wants to uh, would like to hear about Western Sahara. Is anything being done? So three different easy questions. Yeah, for exactly. You. <laughs> you sure you didn't send in the questions, James? They sound very familiar. Um, you know, on on Syria, I think it's no secret that we're extremely disappointed uh, by the outcome of the ISSG meeting yesterday. I think Stefan Dimistor, the UN Special Envoy, said it. It was a it was not a good meeting, um, and we need uh, the U.S. and Russia as leaders of the support group to come together and really lead the the, the struggle for a cessation of hostilities. Uh, the UN is there pushing the diplomatic process. We put the plate put the pieces in place, uh, but the powers directly involved, the parties involved, those who have the influence have to get together and have to realize that there is no uh, there is no solution but a political solution. In the meantime, the UN is mobilized on the humanitarian front. We we were managed to deliver some aid uh, yesterday to rural Damascus. We have convoys waiting to go uh, to, to Aleppo. Obviously, the, the more fighting there is on the ground, the more difficult it is for, for us to get the humanitarian aid in. We'll, we'll talk about the other two questions, and I'm sure we're getting more in a moment, but just quickly on Syria, another one on Syria. This is clearly a moment where President Obama will be ending office, uh, at, well, very beginning of next year, uh, at the inauguration on the 20th of January. Ban Ki-moon ends at the end of this year. Syria is going to be part of their historical record part of the legacy. Have you spoken to the Secretary General about that? Well, I think if you listen to the Secretary General's speech in the General Assembly, you can't help but feel his deep, deep anger and frustration at the continued fighting in, uh, in Syria. As he said, many of the, the countries represented in the hall have blood on their hands uh, for uh, fueling the conflict, uh, for letting the conflict uh, go on. We understand people's frustrations in terms of saying the UN has not stopped the fighting, but I think we all have to understand what exactly the UN is. The UN is the Secretary General for his, and he doesn't have the authority to say stop fighting. He can only push for the diplomatic process, make sure the pieces are there for the parties to, make sure that the table is there for the parties to, to sit down at, and that's what we've been doing and mobilizing the humanitarian aid. And he's been relentless in pushing both of those things. We're getting more and more questions. But quickly, quickly, Kashmir, quick yeah. one on ca Kashmir, you know, ca and then a quick one on Western Sahara. You know, Kashmir, I, people say, is Kashmir a priority? I think, you know, for people who are in the middle of a crisis, every crisis should be a priority. So I don't like to say this crisis is a priority over a different one. I think we have to look at it from where the people uh, stand. I think the situation in, in Kashmir is one that demands people's attention and we hope that both India and Pakistan would be able to solve it in a peaceful manner. Western Sahara, Ban Ki-moon went there earlier in the year, used the word occupation. Uh, Western Sahara, we are continuing with the political process. Uh, Christopher Ross, the Secretary General's personal envoy, we is in discussions to go back, uh, go back to the region. Meanwhile, the uh, peacekeeping mission, the the Minurso, is slowly getting back up to full functionality. We've had it. We've had issues in the last two weeks uh, with very tense moments uh, between uh, the the Moroccans, the Gendarmerie, and the Polisario Front. I think that should only refocus people's attention and supporting the UN process. Whitney, more questions from you. Yeah. Or comments, I don't know. Uh, the questions, yeah. Um, Just questions, please. Yeah. Just questions, yeah. please. Or comments with question marks. There you go. Uh, Bernie Matthews asks, why isn't the UN pushing countries to invest in renewable energy? Um, Aaron Kaira says, I am Filipino. He must not say anything against our president. I love my president. Um, has Ban Ki-moon had in t any interactions yet with the Filipino president Duterte? Um, that's, well, that's okay, well, he's not uh, here. Yes, no, exactly. <laughs> he, is, he, is, uh, he is not here. Uh, the Secretary General did have a chance to chat uh, with the Filipino president on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit in Laos uh, a few weeks ago. They had a very, uh, very positive uh, and friendly exchange. 
Um, that being said, I think the, the UN, it's not about criticizing one president or another, it's about the UN standing up uh, for the principles. Uh, we are against the death penalty and we will continue to speak up when we feel that human rights uh, are being violated. The other one you and have I forgot the question. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, uh, 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 renewable energy. Yeah. Uh, Bernie Mac, we are. Uh, we're doing exactly <laughs> what you'd like us to do. Uh, this has been the Secretary General's refrain whenever he talks about climate. Uh, that in order, in order to solve the climate, you obviously need to reduce emissions, but you need to invest, invest heavily in renewable energy. Secretary General, for him, this, I mean, he has a busy time and he's traveling and you're yeah. sometimes traveling yeah. with him. It's a pretty relentless yeah. schedule, but this must be the busiest week yeah. of the year. You know, I, I wish I brought a copy of his schedule, but it really, it's, uh, it's, it's more than, than 12 hours of going from bilateral to bilateral. Uh, he has about 100, he personally is meeting about, in bilateral meetings, I think about 150 uh, different delegations participating in hundreds of meetings. Um, we cannot let the resources invested in the General Assembly go to waste. As I said, just about every world leader or every country is represented here at, at some of the highest levels. It's an amazing opportunity for the Secretary General to engage, to participate in meetings. We have a meeting on Mali today, a meeting on Myanmar, um, and it's, it's about using everybody's time well. We're here for five or six uh, days. A lot of issues, multilateral issues need to be dealt with, and he doesn't want to waste a minute. And just three and a half months left yeah. in his job. Some good news. Colombia this week, that signing, mm -hmm. that's good news. Yeah. The other one, possibly, we could look at maybe Cyprus. And I know when he gave a news conference before the General Assembly started, he said maybe there could be a deal this year. Yes, I think he's he's very encouraged about the, the ongoing discussions in Cyprus. We're having a meeting on Sunday uh, with the two leaders uh, brought together by the UN, the Secretary General and his special envoy, Mr. Aide. We'll see what happens there, but I think the, the signs are, are positive and things are moving in the right direction. Now, of course, I think for, you know, we're very focused, uh, as we should be, on the security crises. But if you look at the longer term, I think when you look at climate, the Paris Agreement was tremendous, great news this week. We've reached the number of countries needed uh, to put the agreement into force. We now need 55% of uh, global emitters, and we very, we're very hopeful we'll get there uh, by December. And it'd be a crowning achievement, I think, for Ban Ki-moon, who's made climate change his priority since day one. Let's bring in Whitney again. Um, a, a Dubai Mantau asks, what is the Security Council going to do about African security forces during elections? And Sabine wants to thank Ban Ki-moon and Stefan Dujaric for the opportunity to ask questions to you. Aww. Sabine, I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Nobody thanks me. Um, on uh, elections in Africa, on, uh, elections. And, and I think we may be Let's also focus specifically then maybe on the DRC there. Because yes, I think, uh, well, were there, in fact, there are two elections we're right now focused on in yeah. Africa. It is the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the UN is really working to get uh, the Congolese parties, to agree, all the opposition and the government, to agree on an electoral uh, calendar. We're seeing the crisis following the elections in Gabon, uh, just north of the DRC. Today, the Constitutional Court uh, will issue its ruling. Uh, on the differences between uh, Jean Ping and Mr. Bongo. Uh, we're very much pushing for the constitutional, uh, the constitutional to be respected, for people to be able to demonstrate in a peaceful manner, um, and to complain through uh, the constitutional means that, that exist. We have also uh, spoken out, spoken out loudly in different parts, when um, security forces, we feel, have violated the rights of people who just wish to demonstrate peacefully, whether it's in Gabon or in Congo, for take two, just two examples. Let me ask you perhaps a question that's not about substance, but give people a little bit more idea of your yeah. job, because every single day here, right. you do a briefing in front of reporters, and you could be asked a question about any single crisis anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. How do you keep across it all? Uh, you know, I like to say that I have to know very little about a lot of things. Um, and so I try to, like all of us, we have limited uh, mental storage capacity. So I just try to have the minimum amount of knowledge for just about every file the UN is working on in order to answer. And if I don't know, I'll say I don't know. Because um, I've told this to my colleagues, it's better to look stupid than to say something stupid. That's always something we try to remember. Whitney, we have another question. Yeah, uh, Progress Mutamiri wants to know if and when the UN Security Council will be reformed, 
what changes would they like to see? What is holding the Security Council back from being more effective? A lot of people are um, asking about the Security Council and whether it's effective or not. I think and it's, it's not really your remit, but you can give us the background. But I'm happy, I'm happy to, you know, I'm, uh, I'm always happy to talk. Um, I think it's not so much about effectiveness, it's about legitimacy. And the Secretary General and many others have been pushing the Security Council to reform to reflect uh, the world as it is today as opposed to the world as it was in 1945. And I think everyone agrees on the need to reform the Security Council. The challenge is that not everyone agrees on the same formula. And until we get agreement uh, on the same formula, I think it's, it, we may not be able to see that much reform. But reform of the Council is critical for the legitimacy of, uh, of its work. I mean, I, you know, we. If I were a citizen of an African country, if I lived in Africa and I saw that the vast majority of the council's work was focused on Africa, yet there was not one African permanent member of the council, I would raise questions about legitimacy. So I think that, that debate is very, is very legitimate. Um, a lot of people are asking about the uh, race for the next secretary general. Stefan, you'll be out of a job in a few months. Um, would you like to hear your thoughts about about the race and the new transparency that's been brought into? I don't think you're situation. out of a job, are you? I think you're a, a full-time staffer here, but you might I know, be out well, of you this never, job. You, you <laughs> never know. You never know. Uh, but it's not about me, uh, <laughs> for once. Um, I think we very much welcome this new uh, effort of transparency of having every candidate go through sort of a questions time with members of the General Assembly. I think it's fascinating for member states. It's very interesting for the people at large. It's also interesting for the staff, for the tens of thousands of people who work at the UN to kind of see who their new leader uh, might be. We have a next straw poll vote in the uh, Security Council next uh, week, I think on Monday. Then we move to color ballots next week, uh, the next month. We would hope that this is wrapped up by the end of October, or early November. I think it's important, while there's no constitutional calendar, we think it's important that there be at least a month, if not two months, of transition time between the two teams. And what then happens to Ban Ki-moon? I mean, clearly he does his handover with his successor. Yeah. He must be pretty tired after 10 years of this. A long rest, I guess? Well, I've never seen uh, the Secretary General tired. I've seen his staff tired and exhausted. I've never seen him tired. Though I do know he will be on a plane, uh, probably to go home on, on January 1st after handing over the keys of the uh, Secretary General's residence, just a few blocks north of here, uh, to his successor. And I know that you're not going to comment on this, but worth telling the viewers, persistent speculation that maybe he'll do a run to be the president of his own country, South Korea. I bet there's no comment on that. I didn't hear, the, I didn't hear what you said, James. <laughs> Whitney. Steph, this is the kind of question you wish you got every day at the briefing. Chris Barnes wants to know, what is your favorite candy to snack on during a movie? Skittles. Ah, they're controversial these days. Really? Aren't they? I didn't know. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you interpret that one. <laughs> I think we must be coming towards yeah. the end, aren't we, Whitney? Right. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for joining us. A different sort of interview yeah, um, from our audience on Al Jazeera. Thank you for joining us. We, our coverage continues on TV in the more, more formal TV manner uh, with our next report at the top of the next hour, focusing on Syria, focusing on the Russian speech today, the Russian news conference, also diplomacy behind the scenes, intense diplomacy meetings uh, between the Secretary of State and the Russian Foreign Minister. Not scheduled yet, but maybe they're going to take place. Uh, but after yesterday, Today, I don't think anyone's particularly optimistic. Continue to follow us on aljazeera.com. Follow me at Bays on the Road. At Whitney underscore Hurst on Twitter. And if you, you want to find Stefan on Twitter, at Steph Dujaric. There we go. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye bye from the UN General Assembly.